God bless you this morning. Good morning. It is January 27, Wednesday, 2021. Ran into something this morning from uh, one of our files. Uh, we have over three years of television productions from roughly 1990 to 1993, way back. But we were on, uh, I believe it was seven cable stations. So we passed over about three and a half million homes, I think it was. So uh, ministry reached a lot of homes in those days and God gave us favor to be in the midst of many, many wonderful A-list people, celebrities, musicians, all kinds of people. Art Linkletter, I did a great interview with him. Uh, also uh, Pat Boone, and just had a wonderful season taking our camera out as well as uh, many other people that we were, uh, had a great time. And uh, it's wonderful to hear that little inside uh, information that has been maybe on your heart that you have the opportunity to ask someone what they feel about that. Okay, so all of that said is, uh, like I say, I had no idea what this interview was even talking about because I did so many in those days. Um, so it was sort of surprising to me what questions I had asked him in this interview that's about 20 minutes. Uh, I'm speaking about Jeff Fenholt, who was an American singer, musician, and actor best known for his performance as the title character in the Broadway theater adaptation of Jesus Christ Superstar and for his appearance on the cover of Time magazine. Uh, he was born in September 15, 1950, died September 10, 2019 in Newport Beach. So um, I thank God for those days that I was given favor by God to be able to to learn and listen. Listen and learn. Okay. Um, something sort of different today. I realize that it's about a 20 minute interview and then I'm going to uh, come back to you guys. So I think it's important that we keep the legacy of those that truly believed in Jesus, that surely had the ability, had, you know, they could do whatever they wanted anything they wanted but he did take a stand for Jesus so I commend him and his uh, uh, send my uh, condolences to the family as we should continue to pray for his family as well in Jesus name God bless you this morning and I will be coming back and praying with you on air when this is completed so hope you enjoy my time with Jeff Van Holt let me this here it is and god bless you i know that god is going to bless you today because we are in a special home that the holy spirit resides he is ruler in this home we are in the home of jeff and rini fenholt who uh have many many experiences that the lord has taken them around the world just about in the little bit of time that you've been serving the lord now <laughs> that's true it's wild to think of us as serving the lord with the background we come out of, um, uh, we had mentioned before the program that uh, we we thought maybe we should let the people know that I was the original star of the Jesus Christ Superstar and on the cover of Time and a lot of the garbage. Sang for Armageddon, the rock group, and Black Sabbath in 1985, and have done a lot of uh, uh, work in the heavy metal scene. But uh, Jesus has touched my life and uh, touched the life of my wife who was raised Catholic and went to a convent uh, school uh, a school with uh, convent nuns and so we've been kind of uh, touched by the Lord even with Rini coming out of a religious background and me coming out of kind of a demonic <laughs> background we both needed Jesus you know but it's good to be here it's good to be here praise God I have just one quick thing that I really has been burning in my spirit all day for uh -huh. the last week. Do you do Christians believe in reincarnation? No. Thank, thank you. 
<laughs> Thank you. In a word, that's for no. a certain person that's watching. I hope. <laughs> no, we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that He uh, died on the cross and He raised from the dead, and He sits at the right hand of our Father in heaven. And those of us that have accepted Jesus into our heart, we know that we're going to live eternally with with Him, with our Lord. And we do not believe in, in reincarnation. We're not going to evolve. No. <laughs> no evolving. No evolving. Can you imagine having to go through this again? I mean, and especially if you come back as a cow or something. Can you imagine all of a sudden you were like, you know, you were like having a good time and partying and, and you were, you know, you're in some bar getting drunk and then you go out and kill yourself in a drunk driving accident. And because what these uh, people that believe in reincarnation, they believe if you don't live a good life, you come back lesser. So you get in a drunk driving accident. If they're right, you come back, all of a sudden you're munching on hay. Right. I mean, it's, it's really disgusting. But, you, but that's, that's what's so wonderful about, about Jesus is that we don't have to come back. We don't have to go through anything once we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We just repent of our sins. We ask for his forgiveness. And because of what he's done on the cross, it's finished. It's a done deal. And we serve him. We love the Lord. Our kids are being raised up. And they just they are being trained in the Bible and scriptures and very active in, in the church. And so it's, it's a wonderful life because we know that we don't have to go through the things that the world is, you know, there's a lot of teaching, there's a, a lot of, of um, things that are going on that you hear via radio or newspapers or books or, you know, even there's a lot of celebrities that are following things that are not scriptural. And uh, it's, it's very, you know, difficult because they do not have the freedom that we have as Christians. See, so they're doing the best that they can with the knowledge that they have, but the knowledge of Jesus Christ sets us free from all of that stuff. And it's just a wonderful, wonderful life to be serving the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though there's problems, you know, we all face problems. But with Jesus, he supplies all of our needs, and he strengthens us. He gives us strength. So, you know, it's, we, just, we just want the word out that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. It's true. You know, um, there's a lot of musicians, a lot of people in the heavy metal scene who really love the Lord. There's a lot of people who do down deep in their hearts, but they're not serving him. And maybe they haven't really given their heart to him sincerely, but they know he's Lord. I, I got um, met with uh, my old manager uh, last week who manages uh, Paul McCartney and Guns N' Roses. And we flew together from Denver to um, uh, San Antonio with... Uh, McCartney's uh, group and all of them and um, you know the guys were asking me you know what's happened to you I said well I said I've I've had a big change in my life and they said well you look happy they said first of all you're gaining a lot of weight they said you look happy I said well I'm I'm off the drugs I'm not staying out all night getting crazy and throwing up and and uh, thinking I did it right the next day but um, I said there's just been a profound change and and Alex looked at me. He said, well, uh, he said, you're doing concerts all over and doing stadiums. And he said, there's some big crowds coming out. He said, I've been hearing all about this. He said, who's managing you now? And I told him, I said, I'm being managed by the most powerful Jew on the face of the earth. <laughs> and I said, and guess what, Alex? I said, he only asked for 10%. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's because uh, he's Jewish. No, I'm yeah. teasing. <laughs> yeah. Well, but um, anyway, uh, the witness is getting out there uh, to um, just all people, you know. I mean, the, the Word of God says that the whole world will be preached to. The whole world is going to hear about Jesus, and then the end will come. Now, does that mean Jesus is bringing the end? Well, it, what it means is that the world has fallen so far away from God that we are going to see a redemption that's going to occur. And people are either going to be in the boat with the Lord or they're going to be out of the boat. There's no, there's not going to be any in between. I have to ask you, being uh, currently going all over, would you say, I have to ask you about America. I love America. This is my home. Is revival in America now or 
Do you see it more in the other countries right now? Well, right now, I feel like we're going for the <laughs> mic here. It's like, Musical mics. Um, right now, I would have to say that revival is happening more outside of the United States of America. Wouldn't you say, Rena? I mean, we go, you rent a stadium anywhere else in the, U in the world, and it's not unusual to get 30, 50, even 80,000 people coming out. And uh, Rena and I have mm -hmm. seen them sit in the rain, in stadiums in the rain, to hear about the Lord. Mm -hmm. In the United States, um, there's a bunch of brats. Mm -hmm. My generation totally mm -hmm. blew it. I mean, we got all the dope smoking, and, and now we got a president that says he smoked dope but didn't inhale it, you know. Next he's going to say he blew cocaine, snorted <laughs> cocaine but blew his nose. <laughs> and uh, and the, right. the whole generation, <laughs> the whole gen my whole generation um, really messed up. We really, really messed up. And I believe, Susan, that revival is coming to America, mm -hmm. but I believe with all my heart that it's coming upon the youth mm. of America. I feel it in my spirit. Mm -hmm. I believe the young people are going to stand up and they're going to start looking around. The spirit of God's going to hit these young people mm -hmm. more and more, and it's happening already. Mm -hmm. We're seeing it already. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is the most violent generation of young people the world has ever produced, mm -hmm. and they're going to stand up at some point and they're going to mm -hmm. say, we've had mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. We're tired of you using our girls. Mm -hmm are young ladies whom we admire for pornography mm -hmm. and for all this garbage that you guys, you older generations are doing, you with your free sex and free love. Mm -hmm. We're tired of you aborting us. Mm -hmm. Half of my generation is mm -hmm. dead, never even saw the light of day because you've aborted us. Right. And they're going to be saying we're tired of our, our brothers being mm -hmm. cut down in gunfights in the streets mm -hmm. because you've given us drugs from your mm -hmm. generation of mm -hmm. dope smoking mm -hmm. crazies, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And then I think... Uh, uh, finally, I think the youth are going to rise up and say, hey, uh, you took prayer out of the school, you took God out of the school, mm -hmm. and now what do we got, 100,000 people carrying guns into our high schools? We're mm -hmm. afraid to go to classes. Mm -hmm. We got teachers mm -hmm. that are freaked out, people talking to us about all kinds of weirdo stuff, witchcraft, everything else allowed, but God's not allowed in. Well, we're not going back into the classrooms until, we, until you allow us to pray. We're the youth of America, and we got something to say. I believe that the Spirit of God is going to hit the youth, and I believe that the new wave that's going to come mm -hmm. upon the youth generation of America is going to be a wave of revival, and it's going to be through the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And you really, do you see, you really, I get the feeling you really don't feel it's going to be through the churches. Uh, it's going to be through the schools. I think the churches are going are gonna to support. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a support. There's going to be definitely a role in the churches. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly the young people need to hear the word. Mm -hmm. When they get saved, they can't just be hanging out like the Lone Ranger on the streets. Mm -hmm. So the church will certainly play its part. Mm -hmm. The preachers who are going to preach the gospel mm -hmm. uncompromisingly mm -hmm. are going to be used by the power of God. Mm -hmm. And the men my age and older and women we're the ones that are going to be supporting the young kids. Mm -hmm. We're going to be saying, don't you try to touch mm -hmm. our kids mm -hmm. because we'll, we'll really come after mm -hmm. you. Legally, we'll come after you every way. We're going to be supporting, but it's almost going to be like coaches at a football game. Mm -hmm. The players are young. The coaches mm -hmm. are wiser mm -hmm. in, in some ways, but the young people got the muscle. Mm -hmm. They're the ones that are ready to go. Now, we're not talking mm -hmm. a physical mm -hmm. thing. It's a spiritual thing, but the young people are more aggressive. They just are. It's just their nature. And um, I think the pastors, if they preach an uncompromising word, mm -hmm. and if they love the youth, and if they pay, if they give their money to the youth, and I'm not mm -hmm. saying go out and give 10 bucks to everybody in the street. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about if the churches stop hoarding their money up for themselves and spending it on their own banquets, mm -hmm. their own men's and women's retreats and everything else, and putting the kids in the skunk cars, on Sunday morning and saying, well, just go let them sit over here. Church is dismissed That's for right. all you young people. I think they should be saying, right. church is for you young people, and we're mm -hmm. going to cater to you young people. We mm -hmm. want you in here hearing the mm -hmm. word. If you want to stand up and get a little wild here during mm -hmm. praise and worship, go ahead. Oh, yeah, if you yeah, want to, you know, right. you try to nail an 18-year-old young man or a 17-year-old mm -hmm. young man to a pew to on a Sunday pew, morning, it doesn't happen. They sit there and they look like somebody out. kidnapped them and dragged them in, you know. That's right. That's they just right. sit there like, please, right. you know, and they look around. They want to see if anybody's That's wearing right. toe tags in the church. Like, That's right. these people are dead here. That's, right. That's not going to appeal. Um, but And the pastors who refuse to preach the word, 
the ones who try to compromise, the ones who, who stop doing what the Bible tells them to do, the phony baloney macaroni, the ones that are molesting women, the ones that are feeding their own, uh, mm -hmm. uh, their own mm -hmm. selves That's and right. their own egos, they're, gonna, right. they're just going to be payday. Payday pushed payday aside. Time. Well, it's not just payday. I just think they'll be ineffectual. Mm -hmm. They'll be ineffective. They won't have anything mm -hmm. to do. Uh, we're being called to holiness. Mm -hmm. We're being right. called to repentance. And I know people, some people that watch the television, they look at me with my long hair and my wild uh, background, and they say, well, what are you talking about repentance? Well, what I'm talking about is I stopped doing drugs when I came to the Lord. I got clean. I don't do drugs. I stopped running around on my wife, and I have been faithful to her for over 10 years now. I, didn't beat, I don't beat my kids. I stopped hitting people when I got ornery or got mad, and I still, you know, life doesn't stop. We still get angry, but it says be angry and sin not. I stopped being physical and hitting people. I stopped going on stage and singing about death. I quit Black Sabbath because they wanted me to sing uh, Defiant and Damned, and I said, I'm not Defiant and Damned, and I quit. <laughs> I stopped hanging out in the bars late at night. I cut my hair off. <laughs> I did. You this cut is, your hair this off? is short. This is short. And, I, and I, uh, I, I started, but seriously, the hair is kind of a joke. But uh, seriously, I started, I put my life in order with the Lord Inside. because of what He's done for me. That's right. Not because I wanted to do something necessarily for him up front mm -hmm. and then see what he would do for me. He already did it all. And so I just got to the place where I thought, I'm not going to I'm not going to live in a, in compromise. That's right. And that's what we're being called to. That's right. That's in the right. church. That's this is what's going to get the young people fired up. Mm -hmm. Is seeing the Holy Ghost moving on some of the adults, but more importantly, these young people when they start seeing the Holy Ghost moving on each other. Those young people are just miserable. They're not happy. They're searching for real happiness. That's why they're ganging up together because they didn't have that. Well, what do they home. got in the home? They haven't got anything. That's what what's do you so think, sad. Ray? I mean, well, you know, when you asked about revival, and it's true that we see more of an outpouring in, in other lands, but you know, and I think, too, the reason being is that uh, in other countries, they have been denied so much freedom. Mm -hmm. And so, so many, you know, religion, ha you know, they weren't even allowed to uh, right. worship in Russia. And so now, see, other countries are now opening up. And these people had to uh, fight for everything, you know, and to even survive in, in many places in the world. So now when you bring the gospel of Jesus Christ into to these areas, they, they're, they've had to really fight underground to be alive, you know, and to keep going in their faith. This country has been very, very spoiled because we've had the gospel of Jesus Christ right. preached. There's been churches always ever on every practically every corner. You can drive down the street and you see churches everywhere. We've been spoiled and we've become apathetic. Mm -hmm. And what's happened is is the generation of young children have seen basically the the older generation in, in apathy. And and it's they're not they do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And hypocrisy. One thing young people will take is is they will if they see somebody who's living for the Lord, mm -hmm. then they'll listen to somebody saying to them, "You guys need to clean it up." Mm -hmm. But but people, not just young people, but all people, they recognize hypocrisy when they see it. And hypocrisy is mm -hmm. not a Christian, Susan, who loves God and fails. Hypocrisy, a hypocrite, is not a person who loves Jesus and goes out and and mm -hmm. sins or or backslides at one point and and does something wrong. That's not a hypocrite. That's a person who has failed uh, th themselves and the Lord in one sense, and they need to get on their face and repent and go on. A hypocrite is a person who's going to point at a young guy when this guy's riddled with sin in his life and he p he overlooks all his own sin and then points at somebody else and says, look at the sin in your life. Mm -hmm. That's a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. And I think young people can see through that, and everybody can see through that. Mm -hmm. When you see this uh, pride, mm -hmm. 
in the pulpit or pride amongst some Christians that say, we've got all the answers, we know what we're doing, and, and you homosexuals shouldn't be living this way and you shouldn't be doing that way. Well, yeah, right, homosexuals need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. But when they see it coming from somebody who's pounding on them, like, we're so cool, there's only one who's cool and his name is Jesus Christ. That's it. It's in the book of Revelations uh, when he was exhorting one of the churches. You know, Jesus said, "You know, you you've done this well and you've done that well, but you have forgotten your first love." Mm -hmm. And I think that in this country, that's that's been a big problem. Is we have forgotten our first love as a whole. We need to come back and have a relationship now with Jesus Christ and serve him and let our kids see and let everyone see not just our children but our communities that this just isn't a game that we're playing yeah, this is it's not a religion is that's it? right we try isn't. to tell people that it's not a religion it's mm -hmm. a relationship it's a relationship it's not, I'm Catholic I'm Baptist I'm whatever you are that isn't right. it because that's not what Jesus is gonna say what church did you go to he's mm -hmm. not gonna say that he's gonna say did you accept me in your that's heart? right was I in your was I living in your home and you people know, know when you really know. have that's a relationship right. as that's opposed right. to just religion. That's people right. know, and that's how we're the light and the salt of the earth. People see that's the right. difference <laughs> in those that that's are walking right. with the Lord. That's right. Would you would you guys say a prayer for those that sure. are watching, however, however the Holy Spirit yeah. leads you guys? Well, first of all, I would tell all of you that are watching by camera that Jesus, I don't condemn you. And more importantly, Jesus doesn't condemn you. He doesn't call you names and say you're a drug addict or you're a divorcee or you're a this or you're a that. Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus knows our sins. He knows our hurts. But he's looking right at you and he's saying, my child, come to me because I know you're hurting and I'm going to give you rest. Jesus says, my shoulders are wide and my yoke is light. If you came to me, Jeff, and told me all your troubles, eventually I would start to kind of probably weird out. Say, you know, I got problems of my own. I don't need to hear all your problems from now till, you know, whatever. But Jesus says, my shoulders are wide and my yoke is light. That means that you can pour it out on the Lord and he will receive you as you are. This is a come as you are party and you're all invited. Praise the Lord God. The word of God says that if you will receive Jesus into your heart, if you will confess him with your mouth and believe in your heart that he raised from the dead, that you will be saved. And you need to receive Jesus as your savior and the rest what goes on from that point is you and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like you to pray this prayer with us and receive Jesus. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I repent of my sins. I'm sorry for the things that I've done that have hurt me, that have hurt others, and ultimately hurt you. Jesus, you died for my sins. You went in my place, hung on a cross, allowed all your blood to be spilled for me. And you rose from the dead on the third day. Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Wash me in your blood. And cleanse me of my sins. Holy Spirit, I open my life and my heart to you now. Pour out your Spirit upon me and give me strength. Help me to be filled with your glory. I praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Now, you prayed that prayer. Is there a phone number that's coming up on this screen? or You want to, yeah. uh, for those that might not be able to see, why don't you just uh, tell that to them?
over the Is there a phone there. number here? Also, uh, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm afraid <coughs> that uh, we didn't get the number. What is that <coughs> number? Uh, yeah, we have a number also. That uh, this is for bookings and oh no, that's uh, that's my number. <coughs> I was talking about if somebody's accepted the Lord, we'll have to splice this oh, yeah. out. Yeah, there is. I meant if somebody's yeah. accepted the Lord. Yeah, we'll we'll okay, no splice. Problem. We're gonna cut back in now. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. For those of you who just received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, call the number on the screen and there will be people there to pray with you. And um, praise God that you've given your heart to the Lord. Then go and tell somebody, definitely tell somebody that you got saved. Now don't go down necessarily and tell the, the village drunk. You know, I'm sure they'd be thrilled but uh, <laughs> to hear it. <laughs> but tell somebody who's going to, you know, uplift you a little bit here too. And then find a good, solid church that believes the Word of God and get into the church, get into fellowship, get yourself a Bible, preferably um, either a King James or a uh, international, uh, uh, yeah, New International uh, Bible, and read the book of John, the book of John, which will tell you all about Jesus and his ministry. And then keep going in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thanks so much, Rini and Jeff, for your time. Thank you for watching. God bless you, and <clears throat> be sure and stay tuned because we will have another interview coming up on one of our programs with Jeff and Rini. God bless you. Is that funny? Is that funny? You got to see a little bit behind the scenes, like what happens if things don't go exactly as planned. <laughs> but funny, right? Funny. Anyway, I wanted to, I hope you enjoyed that. I really did because I think there is no coincidence for anything that happens. And uh, I lifted up my window a little bit so I'll probably have more light on my face. Hopefully I uh, look okay this morning. Reincarnation, Hebrews 9.27. And just as it is appointed for man to die once and after that comes judgment. Job 14, 10 through 12. But a man dies and is laid low. Man breathes his last, his last. And where is he? As, water fa as waters fail from a lake and a river wastes away and dries up, so a man lies down and rises not again till the heavens are no more he will not awake or be roused out of his sleep ecclesiastics 12:7 <clears throat> excuse me as Excuse me, and the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. The spirit returns. I think these are all great scriptures. I think these are just great. There is so many. I'm taking this from openbible.info forward topics forward reincarnation. Again, that's openbible.info forward topics forward reincarnation. So um, <clears throat> I think Jeff did a fantastic prayer. And um, that was one interview that I did with he and Rini. I did a few and uh, had no idea that, you know, uh, what was really actually couldn't remember what all was said. So I think it was it was wonderful, wonderful time to remember what he believed. And for whoever was supposed to hear that. I know that includes a few that you maybe had questions and uh, were wondering about that yourself is there reincarnation for Christians so you can put that to thought say la 
All right, Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our oil. And <clears throat> before I do that, I last night, well, I don't want to show that side, but I have all of these, all of these to send out today for those that uh, don't know they're getting oil. Some do know they're getting oil. And if you would like some oil, um, you can let me know. It does help the ministry to have donations, but if you are in a specific situation that is beyond your control, send me an email. We'll talk about that. Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our oil today. Here comes the sun. It's big, big storm outside happening right now. The wind, the rain is not right now, but it was very cloudy this morning. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for this time. <clears throat> As Jeff said, holy, mm -hmm. holy people, in the name of Jesus, you have called us to be different, set apart, to not do the things maybe we used to do, the places we used to go. You've called us to fall in love with you, to rise up and mm -hmm. have courage, mm -hmm. to know that you will open doors no man can open, shut doors no man can shut. And you have a wonderful plan. Oh, I can smell it. You have a wonderful plan for us, Lord. We wait on you. But we step away from all the things that we were attached to. And we say, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Fulfill your perfect will for our lives up until our last breath in Jesus name when you come for us and we all said amen okay <clears throat> hope you had a good morning a little bit different I know but I just felt like it was it was something that uh, was going to be a blessing <clears throat> it was to me um, the mini album that I put out is now on iHeartRadio.com. That's like a little blessing to me because I always wanted to be on iHeart. I don't know why. I don't know why, but I just always wanted to be on iHeart. And I just got a notification from my distributor yesterday that I am now in the iHeart radio. If you have trouble, uh, if you subscribe to iHeart, you have to be a subscriber, of course. It's not free. But if you are a subscriber to iHeart radio, then just type in Susan Waldrop in the search in the iHeartRadio, and I am listed as an artist. And I am in, what a crazy section they put me in. What did they put me in? They put me in, I don't see it here. Uh, <clears throat> what, what is this? I wanted to see where they put me. Do you think I can find myself now? <laughs> I can't even find, oh, here we go. Feet, F-E-A-T, meditation, chill out sounds, collective and more. So I have no idea where I'm at. If you figured out, let me know. But anyway, if you're able, if you do subscribe to iHeartRadio and you're able to uh, do that, it would be great if you would give me a little thumbs up on iHeartRadio because uh, I believe it will help always. So new day dawning, taken away. Certain Paths Cross and Forestry of Love under the album New Day Dawning, released in December 2020, is now live on iHeartRadio. Praise God, all glory to God. And I'm working on some new songs. Whew, that's a deal. I was working last night and going through, through some um, emotionally highs and lows. And of course, we're all, you know, human. So I uh, had to take a break last night and just sit with the Lord. I just had to be quiet. So I love you guys, and thank you for coming today. Hope you were blessed. And I will leave you now with how about what shall we do? Let's do New Day Dawning. We haven't heard this in a while. It's a little bit of a dark sound, but God knows his reasons why that is in the group. So... Have a blessed day. See you tomorrow.
I've seen every hour the nights are always the same. And my soul removed the only thing that I know is I don't belong to no puppet show. A new day it on, what will it be? New day it on, will you carry me? New day it on, never thought this would be. New day, darling, what's left of me? What's left of everything the plants that went wrong? What's left of everyone they're buried and gone? Will tomorrow hold? I don't know. And this too shall pass. Somehow we'll make it through. You've got to hold on. Don't give up on your dreams. You've got to. Be strong. It's not as bad as it seems. You know it's part of his master plan. You've got to keep on moving. Don't let go of his hand. Thing that I heard, I heard he'd make a way 